Well, hi! <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to this week's bonus action. Uh, we are here with the amazing Megan. We are back with our cast interviews. I know it's been a super long time, so I am so excited to bring you the improvising all-star, the witty chaos catalyst, the bard who has it in the bag, Emily! <laughs> Slash Megan! Yay! The bar who has it in the bag is really next level. That's perfect. Thank you. Thank you. And by it, I mean the cookie with all of our memories that uh, we'll maybe get back someday. Who knows? Um, yeah. But yeah. Hi. I love oh. your like perpetual cottage core look that you just like have just like sweaters and glasses and cat related things all the time. And yeah, well, I, I like to like. I had to represent Amalite somehow. And I was like, oh, I have my big cat from the world shirt. That's um, amazing. So, I love yeah. it. Cool. Gotta be known as being my girl. Yeah, absolutely. Um, speaking of that, who are you and who do you play in the show? Great, Great question. I'm Megan, but in the show I play Amalite, who is a tabaxi bard slash rogue. Um, and she's a, she's a little troublemaker. But it's good because it pushes me outside of my own personal comfort zone where I'm constantly people pleasing. And I'm like, that's not Amelie. She would destroy yeah. everything. Cool. <laughs> so like we are self-produced. We do all of our stuff. What What is your job behind the scenes? Yeah, um, I mostly edit. So I edit a lot of the episodes, but Dyer and Leticia have started because I was drowning. So that's great. Um, well, so it's a like lot of super the- a lot of work, right? It's like. 12 plus hours per episode something like that yeah it's a lot because I mean the the great thing about our group is that we all love to like talk and go on tangents and play along with bits but that's a bad thing for video editing so Mm -hmm. so it's you know it's blessing and a curse great chemistry but that also means we get easily distracted so I do the editing for the episodes and then I also draw and animate the recaps which are very fun so the best part of every episode I look forward to them so much (laughs) every time I start them I'm like oh my god I I don't want to do this this is going to take so long and then I like do the first drawing and I'm like oh man this is so exciting everything's coming together (laughs) amazing amazing uh so you did like Leticia and Dyer are helping now but you did the first was it seven episodes plus the tea time episodes on your own yeah 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 and you can kind of tell the the quality over time like I feel like the first three episodes I was adding a bunch of like gifs and png and then just like little jokes here and there and then by like the sixth and seventh episode i was like just edit just edit, just, edit. <laughs> just get them out there been... yeah exactly it's been yeah. good to have help i feel like it's just bringing a lot more energy to the episodes yeah what about totally random personality questions like coffee or tea Ooh, oh you know it's coffee it's gotta be coffee i'd love to be a tea person and I can enjoy a, a mug here and there, but if I don't have my coffee, I'm not pleasant. I'm really no, not. Agreed. Yes, absolutely. This is why I'm drinking one as we speak, for sure. Yeah. Cheers. Hey! <laughs> Heels or flats or sneakers? Oh, you know, I think if you had asked me 10 years ago, I would have said heels, mm-hmm. um, but I'm a sneakers girl. I I got to be ready to do improv at any given moment, and you That's can't true. do improv in heels. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you could choose between magic or might in your real life, what would it be? Magic. I've got a very strong boyfriend, so the might is covered, and I could just do the magic. Oh my God, if I could like have a clean apartment and like magically communicate with my cats to be like, Hey, don't wake me up at 3 AM. I'll love <laughs> you forever. Like that. What do you think? Life changing things. What do you think they would say if you magically telepathically communicated with them? That's particular thought. Oh, they'd be really bratty about it. They'd be like, we know we're not supposed to. That's why we do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You got me there. 
what are three things you can't live without? Ooh, that's a tough question. Um, man, see, I'm very much the kind of person who like every two weeks, my interests change mm-hmm. and I will go mm-hmm. so hard in on what my interest is in the that like span of time. Sometimes it's animal crossing. Sometimes it's crocheting. Sometimes it's sims like it just goes back and forth so I'm trying to think of something that is like a constant um throughout all of the variations of fixations let me say it this way imagine that like you got a new job and you're like picking up and moving across the country like what are like three things either like material or otherwise that you're like I need this as I go okay (laughs) um I think my iPad, I definitely spend a lot of my time like drawing and doodling um, in Procreate. So that, that app has like changed my life. I love it. Um, So number one is iPad. Um, I I have to go with like the obvious, which is my antidepressants, you know, like I I mean, (laughs) preach though. Yes. I did not put that on my list and it definitely should have been on my list. (laughs) And then I think uh, we have we have an ice cream maker. And so I would say my ice cream maker as well. We've only ever used it like three times, but every every week I'm like, I'm going to make something this week. And I never do. So I like <laughs> myself the chance. To... It's like a comfort, comfort blanket. You need yeah, it. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. So speaking of what we were just talking about, what is your current like media tv movie video game obsession Ah, okay it does uh oh god it changes a lot especially video now that i think about it especially video game changes a lot i try to do a Hades Uh one like once a week i love hades if anyone hasn't played it it's on nintendo Mm -hmm. switch incredible but i think as far as like media goes uh it's currently smallville um it was my partner's favorite show growing up and he was always like I have to show it to you it's great and I was like this is like a campy CW show I don't like Superman I don't get the point and then I started watching it and it gave me a very deep appreciation of Superman because I never understood he just wants to be human you know like that's all he wants um but he has this like Mm -hmm. massive responsibility to keep us safe so thank you and also a young Tom Welling is like, did you just thank Superman? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And then thank you also for being so, so attractive, Tom Welling. Tom Welling and um, Michael Rosenbaum, the actor who plays Lex Luthor, have just started a podcast where they're watching every episode of Smallville and then talking about it. And so I'm like, I think we Uh have to rewatch it with them because it would be so fun. Yeah. 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 Speaking of games, what is your favorite? Your favorite? favorite either board or video game oh no Um, or one of your favorites yeah um I think well I already kind of said Hades so I won't say Hades for this one I'll say my favorite board game and it's it's uh Betrayal at the House on the Hill which is like I think it's made by the same people who make Dungeons and Dragons actually but it's basically Hmm. like you're a group of like mystery solvers who stumble upon this old house and you only have a few tiles at the start but then as you go you draw tiles so the house is different every time you play and you're placing these tiles Mm -hmm. and eventually you trigger what is called a haunt and that's when like okay the big bad shows up so depending on which room you're in and which card you draw the haunt is different every time so sometimes it's a vampire or a zombie or like spiders Mm. and sometimes Mm -hmm. it's an alien whatever um but normally one of the people playing has become the traitor and so they have to leave the room and they read a separate set of instructions and then Uh come back and everyone has to figure out how to live and um my favorite is when I get to be the traitor because again I get Mm -hmm. to like get past my people pleasing and I'm like ha 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 my job is to kill you all (laughs) oh my gosh 
that is so real though that like I'm a people pleaser but in this specific setting I get to be the opposite of that and it's allowed because it's within the rules yeah oh my gosh I love that too yeah it's, it's really nice it's just yeah. very cathartic as far as like your life Megan's life goes what do you think is the most adventurous thing that you've ever done Ooh, ooh. Um, I think I, uh, I quit a job and I went to New Zealand and Australia for like two months just by myself. <laughs> How did I not know this about you? <laughs> when yeah. did that happen? That was in uh, like February of 2017. So I was in a I was in a program that was ending anyways. Um. Mm-hmm but I left it like a month and a half early, um, which was fine. So like the last three months of it, the goal, I'll I'll stop talking about it. So it was the NBC page program. And um, you go through like the year, year and three months of learning about television. And then the last three months, you stay employed as a page, you do tours, you help with the live shows, but you spend that time like trying to find a job within NBC. So you go to interviews and like informationals. And I... I was like, I don't want to work here. <laughs> you know, like I, I just, I knew I wanted to be doing something more creative. Um, mm. And I learned so much through the page program, but I feel like what I learned more than anything was that like, oh, television is a business. And like, yeah, I want to do business. I want to d- do comedy. So mm. I was pretty, pretty confident that like, it wasn't what I wanted to pursue but I didn't know what I wanted to pursue. And my best friend, uh, Kayla McDougall is from Brisbane, Australia, but she was living in Sydney. And so I was like, well, who knows how long she's going to be in Sydney. So I'm just going to quit, um, and head to New Zealand and Australia. So I got to see Hobbiton. I got to see the Great Barrier Reef. Um, and Kayla has since moved to New York. So it's like, I'm glad I went when I did because right. life's short, things change, take the trip. That's yeah, motto. absolutely. You've already talked about an amazing, beautiful land that you have been to on your adventure. As far as like uh, fictional universes go, if you could go to a fictional universe, where would you go? These questions are so good. Oh, Thanks, oh. Rachel wrote them. <laughs> Oh God, Rachel, why are you so good? Right? Uh, We love you. I think I would want to go to Novigrad from The Witcher, which is like a very, Mm -hmm. it's a very simple answer because it's truly just like a medieval town. But I think the fact that it would open up all of the magic with like the elves and the portals, like that, Mm -hmm. to me, that's, it's kind of like when you ask a genie for a million wishes, it's like, yeah, like I'm just yeah. going to old times where there's like little magic and monsters, ah. but it unlocks so mm-hmm. much more magic in the world. Yeah. Like it's, it's just, a very like, efficient answer. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Or mm-hmm. Neopets. If the Neopets world could be real, I would <laughs> move to the Neopets world. Those are my answers. <laughs> what is one thing that you wish you knew when you were 19? Oh boy. You know, I wish, I wish I could just tell myself to like, don't stop playing pretend. Um, Mm -hmm. I grew up an avid fan of like playing pretend. And I had a lot of friends who over the years, like stopped whatever. And then like fantasy and an interest in fantasy became so like uncool. And I just wanted so badly to like blend in, um, and I, I think in doing so, I got away from like two of my biggest passions, which are like Dungeons and Dragons and like the fantasy world. And then also improv. Improv is literally just getting on stage and playing pretend. And so I wish yeah. I could mm-hmm. like encourage myself to just not, not lose the things that I love the most because other people tell me I should. Um, mm-hmm. But I got back to them eventually. So it's okay. But yeah, sometimes I feel like uh you need that journey just to understand what it feels like without it you know like to to be like oh like this is what this is how much of my life is missing when this doesn't exist you know yeah yeah exactly and like the things that everyone says are like normal or good are like boring 
Like who wants uh-huh. that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Uh speaking of D D, what is your favorite D D class to play? Oh. Oh, you know, I I I gotta say Bard. Like I I am not good in combat. Like I cannot keep track of all of the different spells and abilities and like bonus actions and and I think when you get to be a bard, it's not, you don't have the pressure of like healing because you don't have to be like mm. keeping track of people, but you still can like motivate and literally inspire is the word. Um, mm-hmm. And then you get to do like very basic spells. So like, I mean, I'm obviously a big fan of dissonant whispers and Tasha's hideous laughter. So it's like, okay, I can do like basic spells that don't require a ton of thought, basic combat. And then like, I get to just make other people feel good even though when Amelie does it she mm. makes other people feel bad <laughs> um so it, I think it's a nice way of being both like a support player and like an action player and then also mm. it gives me so much to like role play with outside of combat because it's like oh I'm a bard like let me just run around and tell really good jokes that everybody loves even when they're bad <laughs> bag <laughs> Amazing. Once we start our merch line, it'll be, it'll be one of the things. Uh, what do you think your class would be in real life? Oh, I think it would still be barred. I think mm. like, yeah, I think I, I default to comedy a lot to like try and make people feel better. Um, and I think that's uh-huh. pretty much what my bardic inspiration is in the game. Um, and I, I think I'm, yeah, I'm not, I don't love combat in real life either, you know, I'm not right. mm-hmm. I'm run around mm-hmm. and fight people. So um, I feel like bards have a way of like smoothing things over, uh, mm. good performance checks, good uh, charisma checks. I don't have the same dexterity as a, a good bard would. <laughs> you know what that's okay yeah (laughs) I feel okay about that um but yeah I definitely think Bard I think I think I have a lot of like performancey elements in my life Mm -hmm. um so that's my answer last question what is one thing you love about doing Afterworld oh my gosh I love that I legitimately like never know what to expect um I think oh my gosh yeah (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we yeah. just filmed an episode where that is so true <laughs> yeah yes. and it's like I think it's for two reasons number one I think Rachel's brain is so that I mean she literally has an entire universe living mm-hmm. inside of her mind um which I I don't I don't even think that like viewers of Afterworld have a full appreciation of it and like I feel like we get to know it because we've played in other campaigns with her and like we've heard other things that she's mm-hmm. created and I'm even doing a one shot with her and some of our, Rachel works at the company where I used to work. So we're doing a one shot with like my former coworkers and Rachel and like, she's tying things in to pair them and like the darkness. And I'm like, how, how do you just exist in your life and like have all of these details? Um, yeah. It's so an think- amazing, amazing brain set, you know, like I, I, I get exhausted thinking of creating that <laughs> for myself. <laughs> I do too. It's and yeah. like every detail is so ironed out. So when we do have like moments where we want to go to the blacksmith and get fire resistant uh, armor, she can like, no, oh, I have this bag that like, mm-hmm. let me just see if they go for it. And now the bag of withholding has become a very main part of the show. Um, so I think Rachel has a lot to do with the unexpected. And then I also think that our groups role-playing chemistry has Mm. so much to do with it as well because we all we all clearly want the same things out of playing Dungeons and Dragons and that is like creating a collaborative story uh which is just so exciting and I think we all know that like first and foremost I have to be true to my character who I have Mm. deepest understanding for um because they're my character like I I know them um and we all honor that and like it excites me when other people honor that in their own character too which yeah I think we both know what I'm talking about in our most recent film (laughs) Um, 
<laughs> so it's just, yeah, it's just really lovely to like get to be in a world with people who want the same things. And I also think my favorite part of Afterworld is Roscoe Dirt. I will say that. <laughs> Megan, thank you so much for joining us for this bonus action. It's always so lovely to get to talk to you. And we'll see you next time Yay. on bonus actions. Your champions, your scholars, you have great boobs, regardless of what types of boobs they are, or if they are even boobs, you have great boobs. <laughs> it's the we love you. Boob. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much. <laughs>